Everybody do it this morning. Happy New Year. And we made it. Come on, we made it. You can, you can uh, get excited uh, about that uh, this morning. Hey, before we jump into today's uh, message, I want to celebrate real quick. Uh, many of you know uh, Catherine and Julian. They oversee our uh, First Impressions team in the back. They're actually uh, finally on their honeymoon. That's why they're not here. They got married earlier in the year, but you know COVID, right? So they weren't able to do their honeymoon. They had to postpone it. So they're on their honeymoon uh, right now. So that's exciting. But that's not what I want to celebrate. What I want to celebrate is that they are going to be um, overseeing our young adults group now. We haven't really had one for a while, and now uh, they're going to be stepping up. So Catherine is kind of the, going to be the point person for our uh, first impressions team, but Julian is going to be overseeing our young adults now. So we'll have that something to provide. Yeah, that's something to get excited about. Uh, we'll have someone that will be overseeing that. So you're going to be hearing about different things. I believe one of the, the small groups is kind of geared uh, more toward that age group. I mean, if you want to come to that, that's fine. It might look a little different, feel a little different. But, uh, but we're going to start be, uh, targeting that as to the age group. And we'll be able to do that now for your young adults starting uh, this year uh, right now. So that's exciting. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see uh, how God is going to move. Uh, through that. Anyone ever broken a bone before? Come on, go ahead, raise your hand. You broken a bone? You got parent, parents are in the room and you've had kids and they've broken a bone before. You've been around. Like, I am surprised that my kids have not broken a bone yet. I'm not claiming that. I'm not speaking that. I'm just really surprised. Because uh, number one, Angie's really clumsy. Uh, she's always falling. They've gotten hurt plenty of times. Aiden is really fearless and he just, he's a boy. He does stupid stuff. Like, come on, guys. We, you were all there at one point. And, uh, uh, and I'm just really surprised. Uh, again, not, not speaking of that. I don't want to, because we got money for that. You might just have to stay broke. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, I tell them that all the time. You get, you get hurt. It's just going to stay broke. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, maybe you've experienced the broken bone before. The closest thing I've come is a, a hairline fracture in my thumb. I played basketball in middle school and a, a little bit in high school. And, uh, and you know, you catch the ball wrong, you're going to jam that thumb up real easy uh, in, in basketball. And one time, uh, I did uh, get a little fracture there. I didn't have to do anything crazy. I just had to wear a little splint. It did suck, though, because I couldn't go to PE. That was, like, the worst part of it for me is they wouldn't let me. I had to. They made me go during PE. Like, I'm just going to bench for a little bit. I'm going back to seventh grade, Marshall, uh, back in junior high. Um, and, and I had to sit out of PE with this book. It's a physical education book. And had to take notes off of how to, to have a good, healthy life. And it was boring. I wanted to go out and play football and stuff. But I had to sit out for like a week and do that. It was terrible. I hated it. But anyway, that's the closest I've ever come uh, to breaking a bone. Now, what I'm talking about that is this morning that, that sometimes when you break a bone, you might break it so that, that what they have to do is reset that bone, right? For it to properly heal, that bone might need to be reset. And as they put the cast and everything on there, it's able to have that time uh, to heal. Like spiritually speaking for us, sometimes we need to, in fact, I would say oftentimes, I would say a discipline of ours is that we need to learn how to reset. We need to learn how to reset. We need to learn how to submit and surrender our lives to Christ just on Sundays. No. No. We need to learn how to submit and surrender to Christ when, when we feel like it, when we've got everything together. We have got to learn how to reset, how to surrender, how to submit ourselves to Christ every day. Maybe multiple times a day, right? We've got to learn what that means, what it is to reset our life. As we continue in that relationship with Christ, we have got to do that. Why? Because life drains you. If you haven't figured that out by now, I don't know what to tell you. Life drains you, right? Life is going to drain you. You're going to have some people this week, you're going to have some relationships this week, they are going to try you. They're going to try you, they're going to try the Jesus in you. Tomorrow morning, kids go back to school, for the most part. And their kids are not going to get up. I know ours aren't, because we've been staying up late a lot. But they're going to try you tomorrow, trying to get up to go to school. Someone at your job is going to try you. That coworker you don't like, that boss who you think is a jerk, they're going to try you. And it's going to drain you. It's going to be exhausting. You're going to have people out in the checkout lines that are going to try you. Someone in traffic is going to cut you off. And, and there's these little things like that that are going to drain us. Right? 
have people this week that are going to do that. You're going to have experiences in life that are going to, to drain you and, and to, to almost like suck the life out of you at times if you allow it to. You're going to go through things. The daily grind, keeping up with the kids. Some of y'all's kids are busier than you are, right? Getting them here and there. It's all these different things. Your work schedule, your, your family schedule, all, all these different things that you try to keep up. It's going to drain you. You're going to find yourself exhausted. You're going to find yourself needing a what? A reset. So how do we do that? I want to talk through that over the next few weeks because here's the deal. I, I believe this year, uh, you're going to hear this word, these words thrown out a lot by different Christian Lake Church and, 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 and different preachers out there. You're going to see a lot of uh, like comebacks. And this is going to be the year of comebacks and, and bounce backs. And, and break. I, I, believe, I believe that for everybody every year. But we're foolish to think that that's just going to happen. That, oh, it's 2020, or 2021, excuse me, I gotta get used to saying that. 2021, so man, this is gonna be my year, this is gonna be my comeback, my bounce back, and, and all these different things. But it's not just gonna dump in your lap, right? That's not just going to happen. And for us to allow that to happen in our life, we're gonna have to learn how to reset. We're gonna have to learn to get back to the things of God, to get back to God's purposes for our life, to, to get back to what he's really calling us to and, and the main things and, 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 and really resetting our focus on us. So I'm going to talk to you about your focus today. You need to reset your focus to find God's purpose. Because if we're not careful, we can end up getting ahead of God or, or getting out, away from God all on our own for our own purposes and our own desires and our own New Year's resolutions. Instead of making all these things that we think are good ideas, why don't you ask God, what should I do this year, right? God, how should 2021 go for me and my family? What are some changes that I need to make, God? Before you go into the gym, right, before you're going and making that book list, uh, book to read this year, whatever, why don't you ask God, why don't you pray about it? God, what do I need? What do you see in me? What needs to change in me? Technology has just been so fun today. <laughs> Throughout your day, your focus is going to be drawn. Your, your focus is going to be drawn to all different things. Many of us, we, we have ADD, right? <laughs> and, and we all have those squirrel moments, and something's going to take our focus. Right? So, something's going to get us off track. Something's going to get us off coach. Something's going to get us triggered. Something's going to get it. And, and, and all day, we're going to be going, right, I've got my to do list. I've got to get these things done. Oh, boss is calling me. I got it. Oh, no. Oh, we've got, what is it? Is Bob about to grab for you? I have no idea what it is. Super annoying. It's getting me focused. See, my focus is, is getting on the wrong thing this morning. And so, our focus, your focus is getting messed with right now. I'm just playing. Focus can often get drawn away. We've got to learn how to reset. We've got to learn how to, how to, how to focus on, on God and get back on track to what he wants us to do in our life. This past year was crazy. Like, there's no getting around that, right? 2020 is going to be one for the books. Uh, many of us are going to want to forget it, but all of us are going to remember it. But did anything really change in your life? Throughout the quarantines and the no toilet paper and uh, no Lysol, all that stuff. Did anything really change? How, how did we adapt to that? Many people thought, well, I'm at home, I got more time. But did we really do it? If you go look, maybe more people binge watch like Netflix and things like that. You go look, go Google it. Later, not right now. Go later. Google it. And see what people really spent their time on. And you know what? You can see what you value most. You can see what's important to you most by just those very things. The things that you spend your time doing. Did anything really change in your life? Did the things of 2020, did they challenge you to trust God more? Did they challenge you to focus on Him more? And not on all the external things. Not on the, the pandemic not on all the, the riots and the election and, and all the, the stuff. Did those things, did they create an urgency in you to seek after God more in 
in your life. Again, I believe this year it could be your I believe this year could be a year where you come back, where you bounce back, where you receive breakthrough. But it's only going to come when we put our focus on the things of God. Turn to James chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 13 through 17 this morning. We're trying to be careful a lot. It seems to be what probably James chapter 4. Verses 13 through 17. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin uh, for them. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it challenges us. I pray that in those challenges, God, we learn to turn to you more. God, we learn to turn our attention to you, our focus on you. God, may you be our everything and nothing else, Lord. In Jesus' name. James is in the beginning of a new section here in this passage of Scripture. But what he's doing is he's connecting the themes between chapter 4 and chapter 5. And he's doing that through a concept of humility. You, you heard, he was pretty strong talking about uh, these people's arrogance, right? And, and so he's doing that through humility. And, and, and chapter 4, he starts off. Uh, talking about how true faith, it judges pride by humbling oneself before God. And he hits this need for humility to resolve conflicts and have a harmonious relationships. Now he turns to the subject of humility with regard to the future. He's confronting an arrogant spirit that he's observed among the churches there. Although these people profess to know Christ, they're living with this kind of worldly attitude and this worldly concept and, and what John uh, would call in 1 John chapter 2 the boastful pride of life. They're making plans without God. They're making these plans of, of what they're going to do next and the business that they're about to conduct and the wealth they're about to accrue. They're doing all this without considering God, right? Right? And, and that's where we fit that in uh, to our lives today, is that we can jump into a new year and be like, new year, new me, new start. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to make all these goals. And we can easily do that without having God involved at all. We can easily do that without God in our life. And that should scare us. That should scare us that we can try to do things without God. We can do that here in the church if we're not really careful. We can try to get ahead with all these plans and dreams, and we can spend money and invest in all these things with, without considering God, praying, or involving Him in any of those plans. Right? It's the Lord who makes all things new. It's the Lord that orders our steps. It's the Lord that has purposes for us. So why would we try to go off track or contrary to that? It's like the prosperous man in Jesus' parable where he says, I'll build bigger barns to store my goods. And I'll say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, drink, and be merry. But God says to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who will own what you have prepared? James makes four points in this passage that, uh, that we read this morning. Number one, he says, life is a vapor. He said it's a mist. Life is very frail, it's fragile, it's short, and death is certain. Now, I know, man, you're just feeling super encouraged. You can feel the joy of the Lord being the strength right now. Like, and if we stop there, that would be super depressing. But it's the truth, right? Life is very short. If you look at your life, it's a little dot in comparison to all of eternity. It's, it's, it's just a little, little dot. That's not to say that your life is insignificant because it's not, but that's to say that since life is a vapor. It is a mist. It is short. It is frail. It is fragile. And we need to make the most of it while we are here. 
We're not promised tomorrow. So let's make the most of today. So how, how do we do that? That depends on how you look at things. Right? If you learn to look at things with an eternal perspective, in, in other words, an eternal perspective is something that, that is, is forever, right? So something that we can put an investment in, something that we can trust in, something that we can go after. It's eternal. It lasts, right? There's things that we put our time and our effort and our importance, and we put value in a lot of things that are going to fade, that are going to fail, that aren't going to work. You bought Christmas gifts for your kids that are going to break in a couple months, right? You spend all that money on something that's going to break and not last, right? And I'm not saying don't buy gifts for your kids. Don't, don't take that for a Don't get it twisted, right? But we've got to learn to invest and put our hope and put our trust and put our value and importance in eternal things and have an eternal mindset. That's how we're going to make the most of today. That's how we're going to make the most of every opportunity that God gives us in this life is if we have an eternal mindset. Yeah, you, you might make the most of day by, by getting things done on your to-do list, which is important that you should want to do that. But our, is that to-do list, is that God's list for you? Right? You, you might make the most of day with meaningful conversations. Well, is God in the middle of those meaningful conversations? Right? You, you might be getting some much-needed rest, but is God your rest? Come on. You might be catching up on things that you put off. Again, is God in the middle of that? Are you doing these things with an eternal mindset? Are these God things or are these just good things? Because we can get caught up and we can get our focus and attention on a lot of good things, but they're not really God things. Right? Are they God things or are they good things? All those things are good things in and of themselves, but anything can take our focus away from God and off of His purposes and off of what we want. Let's be honest. We make time for things that we value. The things that we really hold most important and dear to us, we will make time for, we will invest in, we will give money to. Church asks for money. Church is always asking for money. We get all grumpy. We take a the offering. Because money is the number one thing in contention with our heart. We will invest in, we will make time for the things that we value. Okay? If you ask anybody, hey, how's your prayer life? Oh, you know, I, I mean to do it, but I just, I just, I don't have time. Yeah, you do. We have the same amount of time every single day. We have 24 hours. That doesn't change. We have the same amount of time every day. You get the same amount of sleep every day. You, you know, like, we just make all these excuses. Don't go into a new year with the same excuses. Nothing's going to change. Don't we want to be we will value and invest in our time, our talents, our resources, and the things that we value the most and are most important to us. We set aside time for all sorts of things. You, you, you set aside time for, for, for and, and, and some of those things, like again, they're good things, they're not bad things. Time with family, that's important, you need that. Like, the time, downtime, that's important. You need a rest. You need that. There, there's, you know, I'm not saying don't go fishing. Do that. I want to go. If you want to go, go by me, please. Right? But, but I'm just saying, we oftentimes put all those things ahead of God. How oftentimes do those things and then, oh, I'm tired on Sunday. I don't think I'm going to go to church then. Right? You know, but now let's put God as our priority this year. Let everything else kind of flow from that. Life is a vapor. It's short. It's fragile. So let's focus on what matters the most. And I, another thing that, that James mentions is that God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Guess what that means? We are not. God is sovereign and we are not. The problem was not that these businessmen were making plans for the future. You should, you should make plans. You should set goals. Those are important things. But, but they were doing that all without God involved in it. They're, they're, they're making these plans, they're making uh, plans to make profit and engaging in all these business uh, opportunities, but none of it had God in the middle. They don't mention God one time. Planning is commended in Scripture. There, there's all sorts of moments that are, uh, where it is. Financial planning is, is good stewardship. We should do that, but it should be done with dependence on God. And it should be done with God first. That's why we talk about giving our tithes. 
It's wise to have a, a living will and, and, and a trust, right? It, it's wise to have those things. It's wise to have some savings. If you follow Dave Ramsey, he'll say you have that thousand dollars set aside for emergencies. And that, that's wise. But if we do that without God, it doesn't matter, right? And that's the problem. That's, that's where, where, where James is really hitting at in this passage is that these men were making all these plans and, 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 and trying to accrue all this wealth without considering God. In the they were arrogantly making these plans. James was really harsh with us. He said, you're being, you're being arrogant. You're making plans for the future, but you're not trusting in God in any of it. They were assuming that they were in control of their future and that everything would go according to those plans. And so that's why James mentions, if the Lord wills, we will live and, and also do this or that. As we put our trust in Him, as we put our hope in Him, as we say, hey, God, I need you to be in 2021. God, I need you to be the center of my life. God, I need you to order my steps so that I go the right way, so that I can carry out your purposes, so that I do something that matters most. And as we do that, he will order our steps. As his will comes in and aligns you, our lives, we, we begin to go the way that he wants us to go. So many times we get ahead of God or just leave him out. All together. Guess what? If you don't know this, you need to know that your life is not your own. Like you were created by God, for God, for His purposes. God is God. We are not. And know this one, you can trust in Him with every aspect of your life. He wants us to give Him our whole heart. Oftentimes we give Him just bits and pieces. Oftentimes we give Him the parts that are easy. God, yeah, you can have this area of life, but I kind of like this, this part of it. He wants our whole heart. He wants us to consider him Lord of our life. From the boardroom to the bedroom. He wants to be Lord of all, over all, over all of your life. And if you learn to begin to see him in every aspect of your life, if you learn to, to, to sense him, to recognize him, to hear him, you can see him in everything. In every part of your life, in every, every, every season, every moment, every action, every activity, I believe God is speaking. It's just a matter of, are we tuned in to his voice? You can, you can experience him in everything in your life, but are you focused on him today? Maybe, maybe you need a reset if you are not. James states that life is a vapor. God is sovereign over every aspect of our life. And his words imply a third truth, that we are prone to pride. We are prone to pride. There's a draw toward pride. There's a draw towards doing things on our own. There's a, a draw to doing things without God. Verse 13 reeks with arrogance. Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. There's a lot of mention of what we will do, but there's no mention of God. And James directly confronts. This attitude, he calls it sinful, he calls it evil. Verse 13 says, but as it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is, is evil. Again, John mentions this pride of life, this boastful pride of life, and that refers to an arrogant self-sufficiency of the world apart from God. We, we see this attitude, if you go back to the Old Testament, you see King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the Babylonian king. Um, and you can look back in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. And there's this time where King Nebuchadnezzar is up on his palace roof. And he's kind of looking around at this kingdom. He's looking around at, at everything. And, and he says this. He says, it's not, or is this not Babylon the Great, which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty. Right? And if you continue reading that, God speaks to him in this moment. It's like, hold up. What did you say? <laughs> He doesn't actually say that. That's just my version of it. He's like, no, no, you, you are missing. You got it all right. You didn't create this, right? God calls him out for his arrogance and his pride. Many of you know, if you're into history, you've heard of Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte was a military genius. But his pride led to his downfall. He was about to invade Russia. And a friend of his tried to dissuade him. But when it became apparent that Napoleon wouldn't be budged, his friend shared a familiar proverb with him and said, Man proposes, but God disposes. And Napoleon angrily claps back and says, I dispose as well as propose. And if you study history, if you study that time, it's clear that that act, his invasion into Russia, seems to be a turning point in his downfall. Everything that 
we have comes from God. If you could just get that truth, if you could hold on to that truth, if you could live that truth, the fact that everything that we have comes from God and it's by His grace. And that we live our lives out of that. That, that my life is God, so I've got I've to live this life differently. Uh, the money that I have is not mine, it's His, so I need to invest that differently. The strength that I have to do my job, even though I filled out the application, and even though it's my talent and ability that maybe got that, it, that came from everything that we have, comes from God, by His grace. And we fall into pride when we don't keep that in mind. Don't fall into that, that's a trap. Don't fall into that. 2021, don't fall into that. As you make plans, as you, as you, as you start to dream, and as you start to set goals for a new year, don't fall into that trap. Put God first in your life. Trust in Him. Trust in His plans and His purposes to see you through. So that no matter what happens, whether it's coronavirus, no matter whatever this election ends up being, no matter what happens in 2021, guess what, man? I'm trusting in God. Guess what? He is in control of my life. I'm fixing my eyes on Him so that whatever happens on the outside, I'm good on the inside. James concludes... With another truth that says our response to God should be humble obedience. The theme between chapter 4 and 5 is humility. Humility. Knowing that, man, I can't do this without God. That I am not my own. That, that God has created me. He's given me strength. And, and, and all these things that I, I absolutely need. Them. Our goal as Christ followers is to live for Him. And He wants your full attention. He wants our whole heart. He wants your passion. He wants you passionately pursuing him and, and on the things of this world. He wants your treasure, your time, your, your talents, your money. He wants all of us. So let's get practical. How do we reset our focus? Number one, you turn your win into now. Turn your win into now. Listen, the Bible says in Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Proverbs 27, 1, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Turn wind into now. Oftentimes we do this, oh, man, when, I, when, I, when I get time, I'll, I'll get around to this or that, right? When I, when I get the time to do this or that, and when it comes to God, when, when I have time to pray, or when I have time to read, or when I have time to serve, and I'm really busy right now, so, so once I get through that, I'll, I'll be able to serve more in the church, or, or, or man, just... You know, it's been a busy week, and, and so, you know, I may not be there on Sunday this week. And we, we make all these excuses, and, and we've got to stop doing that. 2021, let's turn the win into now, right? Because we've got to make the most of, of today. So instead of when I have time to pray, it's like, no, I can't do anything unless I pray. So set that as a priority in your life. That might need to be the first part of your day before you get busy, before you start doing anything else. Guess what? That might require you to wake up a little earlier. I know, I still don't mess with my sleep now. But in my, if, you're, if things are going to change in this new year, you're going to have to make some necessary changes. One of those things might be to set a priority. Again, we set a priority to do all sorts of things. you got reminders on your phone to do this and do that. You make sure to, to, to value watching the game this afternoon. You're going to set aside time already to do this and, and do those things, and you may already have your week all planned, but, but what does God want you to do? What about praying? What about, what about studying God's Word? What about those things that He really wants you? Oftentimes, those things get pushed in the back burner, and that's why I never have time to do it. Turn the wind into now with, I, I, I'll give my whole heart to God when I get my life all together. No. No, you won't. Give your life to God right now and watch Him piece your life together. Give your whole heart to God right now and begin to walk out those things in your life. Oh, when, when, when I get my finances in order, when, 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 I, when I get a little bit more, I'll be able to give more. No, you won't. No, you won't. God's gonna trust, if God can trust you with a little, then He can trust you with a lot, right? When I, when, when I feel like it, I've just, just been really, just really tired, really busy. Or, or how this, when, when, I, when I'm old enough, when I'm old enough, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of figure, no, young people, don't wait. Don't waste time. There's some adults in this room that will tell you, don't waste another moment trying to follow the crowd, trying to follow what everybody else is doing. Young adults in the room, you're trying to chase all this stuff. No, right now, the, now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to get your life in 
fix your eyes on God and His purposes. Because there's many of us in this room that will tell you we wasted some years on a bunch of stuff that didn't work, that didn't last. From when into now? How do we reset our focus this year, turn our intentions into actions? Many of us, we have good intentions, but we never carry them out. James 4, 17, remember we read that earlier, it said anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Right? What is the good intention you have that God wants to turn into a good action? What is it that you need to do this year? What is it, some intentions and some things that you know God wants you to do that you need to turn into an action? God might place someone on your mind and on your heart. And it might be like, oh, yeah, I should probably call them, but then you never do. How many of us have done that? We were like, oh, I knew I should have called them. Again, didn't do good for this. Life is short. Today, it's going to go. It's going to be gone. Don't waste that opportunity, man. If you feel like it, whether it's God or not, there's a reason. They're on your mind and your heart. Text them. Call them. Maybe show them out. That may not work so much. You don't want to call them before you just show them out. But, but do something, right? Reach out. God may place them on your heart and mind for a reason. Check on them. Pray for them. Pray with them. God may be asking you to do something. Just say yes. Hey, he might be asking you to pray for someone at Walmart. Man, there's a lot of people at Walmart. Be fair. Right? You're spending all day, man. That will, that will change your prayer life. Right? But, but, but God may place them on your You might just have that. Oh, man, I just need to go to Walmart. God might call you to, to give. Five bucks, ten bucks, or something to someone. But what do we often do? We, we, we're like, oh, is this God? I don't know if this is God. Huh? If it's God, if it's not, what does it matter? You should always pray for someone. That's not going to hurt anything. Like, if you give five bucks, ten bucks to someone, whether it was God or not, it doesn't matter. Your generosity is good. Quit making excuses. Let's turn intentions into actions. How many times do we say, man, I was going to call, but then I didn't? I was thinking about doing this thing, but I just didn't really get around to it. And I had this idea in my head, but I've often heard it said that cemeteries are the richest places on earth because people went to the grave with million dollar dreams and ideas and things that they never carried out in their lives. Don't let that be you. <laughs> Don't let that be you. Turn your intentions into action. Turn the wind into action. So now, and the last thing is going to funnel everything else to make sense. And that's turn your whole heart to Jesus. Turn your whole heart to God. Worship team, you guys can come on up. We're going to get ready to worship together one more time here in just a few moments. I'm going to pray for those that want prayer. But man, turn your whole heart to Jesus today. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will find him when you seek him with all your heart. It doesn't say some of your heart. It doesn't say the parts that you feel like. It says, you will seek me. You will find me. You seek with all. All your heart. A.W. Tozer says, since we are created in God's image, we have the capacity to know God. In our sins, we only lack the power. You have been born and created with the ability and the capacity to know God. Maybe not fully understand Him, but to know Him. To experience Him. To hear from him. You have been created with that ability. It's in our sin. It's in our, our inability to do the right things. It's in, it's in our, our own selfishness and pride that, that we lack the power to carry that out in our life. But you have the capacity. You have the ability to know God. It's whether you really want to do it or not. Come on. So there has to be that reset in our lives. There has to be that turning. Every time we repent and turn back to God, that's a reset. Every time we surrender to God and say, God, I just can't anymore on my own. That's a reset. The first time you gave your life to Christ and said, Jesus, come into my heart. The old was gone and the new had come into your life. That's a reset. We need a reset. And that reset is a surrendering of our hearts, our minds, and our soul. And it's not just for us, but it's for his purposes. My son is eight. He loves video games. Always wants to play them. He's always asking me to play. I'm 
not so big on gaming anymore. But I'll do it this quality time with him. He loves to play video games. We have a Nintendo Wii. We're a little old school. We have this Nintendo Wii. We love, they love Mario. That's Mario Kart. All those. Love that. Right now he's big into football and that. Won't play all those things on there. But sometimes the Wii gets hot. We play it too much. It gets hot and it gets warm. And so there's this button at the top. Reset button. You gotta hit that button. Reboots. Back in the day, if y'all remember the original Nintendo, right? That reset button. Yeah, if you, the game wasn't working, you had to take the cartridge out, blow it. I always I had to hit it a little bit. Put it back in. This year, 2021, the beginning of the year, January, third day of January, 2021. Maybe you need to reset before we dive into a new year, whatever that year is going to bring. Maybe you need to reset today. So that you are aligned with God. So you're aligned with his purposes for your life. Because it's so easy to get off out on our own. Maybe today you need reset. Here's the thing. God, it's not just for you. God doesn't want to just change your life. He doesn't want you to just reset so you're focused on him. He's wanting to build off the Jesus that's in you. So as you reset, as, as you begin to fall in line with God's purposes, He's going to use you to reach those around you. He's going to build off the Jesus in you to change the world. In a lot of leadership, there's a, a concept that you are, uh, that you re reproduce who you are. You, you reproduce, you, you do that, families, you do that with your kids. Parents, moms, dads, you reproduce who you are into your kids. God has called us to be multiplied. What did He tell Adam and Eve? Be fruitful and multiply. That's not just meant to have babies and have kids, right? He, 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 he's expecting to produce something in us and through us. You are multipliers, and you're going to reproduce who you are. God's going to reproduce the Jesus in you. But if there's no Jesus in you, or there's not a lot of Jesus in you, it's hard to reproduce that. It's hard to be that multiplier. In the Bible, Jesus is called what? The chief cornerstone. God is going to build off the Jesus in you. So in order for us to do that, we've got to reset every day. We've got to surrender our heart and our life and align with God every single day. So for you, I want you to think about a couple things. As we get ready to close this morning, imagine, imagine you're at the end of this year. You're at the end of 2021. It's going to happen a lot faster than what we think. And it feels like we were just at the beginning of 2020. We're all like crazy. But imagine right now, if you will, you're at the end of 2021. Imagine that first of the moment. How will you have grown between January right now and December at the end of this year? How will you have grown in your walk with Christ? How will you have gotten closer to him? What does that look like in your life? Can you imagine that for a moment? And as you imagine that, as God speaks to you in that, as God begins to reveal those areas where you need to reset your life, that's going to give you the goals that you need to put forth right now here in January. That's going to give you the steps that you need to take. Will you finish this year closer to Him than when you started? What will have your focus in 2021? What will you carry out? Imagine that if you Now, this might be a little weird for you. But imagine you're on your deathbed. None of us like to think about that. But imagine you're on your deathbed. What will you have accomplish in your life that matters in light of eternity? What will you have accomplished in your life for the kingdom of God? What will you have done so that as you're laying on your deathbed and you're reflecting and your life is literally flashing before your eyes, you're about to step into eternity the Lord. What will you have accomplished? What will you have carried out? You need to start thinking about that now. Because again, just like James said, life is short. It's a vapor, it's a mist, it's here today, it's going tomorrow, today. We're already halfway through this day. Do what matters most. Turn the wind into now. Turn intentions into into actions. Give your whole heart to God. Some of you, you need to dream. You need to
to dream, you need to dream big. You need to dream big, God-sized dreams in your life. What could God do in your life if you truly gave it to him today? If you gave all of yourself to God, what could he do? Now, immediately, some of you are going to already go to, well, if this, but that. And you need to get that out. If, if, don't focus on those things. Those are your weaknesses, but in our weaknesses, we are made strong in him. And it's his purposes that remain true in our life. Don't focus on your limitations. Focus on who God is and who he wants you to be. Some of you in the room, you need to dream all over again because you've kind of, you, you kind of gotten off the dream. You've kind of gotten off the plans that God has had for your life. Or somewhere along the way, they, they stopped and you stopped dreaming. You need to dream again. Whoever that is, wherever you're at in that today, come on, will you give your whole heart to God? Why don't you stand up with me this morning? Let's reset our focus to find God's purposes today. What prayer?